we are at a moment of political realignment, a moment of clarity, a moment of clarity that has been on the build my entire adult life, since I've been a kid, since I've been in my teens. And we were, we're right there. We're not going to miss this opportunity to clarify this because we've had our politics perverted in the afterglow of World War II. And here's why. There was no bombing in the United States. We took credit here in the United States for being so badass because everybody else was in a rubble pile and it took them about 20 years to build back. And we helped them build back. I don't know if it was better or worse. I'm not going to go there. But the point is they were ruined. These econ- Germany's economy was ruined. Japan, Russia, all these countries were ruined. So we got a 20-year head start. And boy, the money-making was fantastic. Because when you're the only country with a intact industrial base and people are starving all over the world, your self-image is one of supremacy. And because everyone got to get a chance to get in on that supremacy, we lost the duality between spirituality and materialism. Everybody focused on making money because the money making was fantastic. So the Republican Party, if you go back and look at its historical roots starting in 1856, that was the party of Abraham Lincoln. That party, the Republican Party, which I am an officer of, and the reason I am an officer, only one reason, it was the party of human freedom and human well-being. It was a spiritual movement. The Democrat Party, on the other hand, was the party of slavery and materialism. So we had two clear choices. You can vote, vote for the European business model of slavery, drugs, and piracy. That was the Democrat business model. And Lincoln said, hey, you Whigs and, and you know-nothings, you're in it with these, you're in a uni party with these Democrats. I'm out. I'm starting a third party. That's what the Republican Party was. It was a realignment of politics as a response to slavery. Now we're having a realignment in a response to debt slavery. It's the same thing rebooted over 100 years later. And now what these uh, pundits are not really capturing yet is that if you're focused on taxes, on low regulation, and the military, you're a materialist. Your home actually is with the left. Isn't that great that all these people that have been in the hierarchy of the Republican Party, and they're losing, their icy grip is being removed now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's changing. McConnell resigned. Romney. Romney resigned. These people are running for the hills. Newland. Resigned, same person, Mitt Romney, Victoria Newland, same person, but they're 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 realizing that the pressure on the wall of the post World War II democratic liberal order, the pressure, is being met by the failure of the paradigm. It's going the wall's going to crack. It's cracking, and why they hate Donald Trump so much is he's a sledgehammer on that wall. Mm. You know so. I, I'm, 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 all the feedback. I mean, I have so many things I could say negative about Donald Trump. We could fill the whole Hebrews episode because I we've talked about it. He's, you know, but man, if a guy's going to stand up there with a sledgehammer all by himself, well, he's not by himself. There's a few other ones, Steve Bannon. There's a group of people that are standing there at the ramparts, leading the way and saying this paradigm doesn't bring about well-being for American citizens. And it's a complete realignment of politics because those Republicans that are in this for the material, of course, that's all they see in Donald Trump. They don't see his spiritual side. You got to look for it carefully. I do. I must admit, he hides that. He hides that. But he, you know, he is becoming more and more spiritualized. And why is that? He's being assaulted 24 hours a day, seven days a week since he came down that elevator. At a certain point, you got to let go and let God. You have to say to yourself, I have to walk by faith and not by sight. Because when he looks around, he's going to lose all of his money and his freedom. 
So he has to say, God, please use me. He's down to the God faith level. Mm. I think that's a fantastic change in him. And those people that stand over and judge any other man in terms of his faith, those people need to step back. A man's faith and a man's walk, when a man turns and repents, that's between that man or that woman and their creator, the creator that granted us these unalienable rights. So right now we got a moment of great realignment, and I think the um, Republican Party, that schism, we got a lot of Democrats in the Republican Party, and they're going to have to make a decision. Now, I'm going to tell you what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to go into the booth on Election Day, and a very large percentage of them are going to vote for Trump and then lie about it. They're going to, not, they're going to tell their wife, oh, yeah, I voted for Biden, but in there, because when it's really just them in that religious space of voting where they exercise their free will, how can they vote for communism and say they believe in God? Well, there's plenty of people who believe you can be a communist and a Christian. There are. I never tell me about it. Oh, well, there is. There is. Uh, there's Christian communities throughout history that were communists. That were the early, the early variations of communism, not Marxism. Marxism. Now, there's a difference. Okay, let me let me right, let's, let's refine. There is a difference. Okay, yes, thank Historically, you. Historically, there is a difference between communism and, and Marxist communism or, or Marxist Leninism and you know that they did a they did a different deal. But the the idea, the root idea of communism, which you almost can't even say because it's not the way the word is used anymore, but a lot of early Christian communities did practice a sort of commune, you know, style of of uh of of uh, village, whatever you know, whatever you know, whatever their their size of the the area was. But um, Karl Marx is you know secular to boot. I mean, it was just fundamentally secular and and anti anti Christian. Anti Christian. Okay, yeah. so let me rephrase. Give me a chance to can <laughs> I can I get an edit on that? Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, how yeah. can you go into the you boot can't. and say you're going to vote for the Marxist? Oh, you can. You can if if you <clears throat> if you're a five hundred one c three Christian. If you're self deceiving, yeah. If you're five hundred one c three, if if your uh, if your if your Christian identity is, I don't cuss, but I give my tax money to make uh, weapons of mass destruction and kill innocent people, and I do it with a with a smile on my face, and I sleep well at night because we have the greatest country and in I, the world. I sleep well at night because you know Dennis Prager tells me everything is is great. You know that that that's you know that's acceptable. Because Dennis Prager is the highest, uh, you know, expert on, in my, expert on, on, on Russia, more authority. Yeah, speaks <laughs> Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, give me a break, you know. And that that is that 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 is how the country will fall. And and I'm not uh I'm not saying that to pat my own my, pat myself on the back or pat the uh the MAGA movement on the back or pat the War Room Posse on the back or pat Steve on the back or or any of us. But but it seems very clear, given the statistics from yesterday's Minnesota primary. Shocking. Donald Trump gets more primary votes than Joe Biden. By quite a wide margin. 35, 40,000 votes. Incredible. But the dark horse in the story is that Nikki Haley got 70,000 votes. <clears throat> and which... I, will say, I will say as a Republican Party officer mm-hmm. in Minnesota, mm-hmm. the Republican Party of Minnesota made a great effort first to get Ron DeSantis to the front of the pack. I mean, they don't give up the ghost on Ron DeSantis. They're still working him like he's going to merge out of the clouds. And then Nikki Haley, they brought her, brought her here, and she has, and he had big support, you know, within the cohort of the tradition. Yeah, but Ron didn't support her. So I mean that that shows you that that shows you the level of deception they got going on. They have going on inside the Never Trump movement, the self deception they have going on inside the Never Trump movement, as if the. The, the walk from Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley is an easy one. Well, it's an easy one for people who weren't honest to begin with because Ron wasn't supportive of Nikki. He, he went after Nikki Haley, you know, viciously at the end before he withdrew. I mean, he almost tried to make himself, you know, the Donald Trump that was left in the – he went after Nikki Haley so vicious. It's it, it, He was more on the vague side 
when the final presidential can uh, uh you know uh, debates came down you know and he was on hard, Nikki Haley's I side. have to tell you I'm having a hard but time But the fact that but the fact that they actually believe they can just walk from Ron to Nikki tells you that they think it's all about Donald Trump. It no and that's what but see this is another thing. For them it We're is. We're focusing on candidates. They every pundit, every influencer, every newspaper they're talking about candidates, candidate. They want everybody looking at the candidates. Forget the ideas. Forget the ideas. This is a very simple election. Uh, and I'll tell you, we're going to make this work, you and me. And I'm going to hope that we have the juice, that you have the juice, <laughs> to pro- propel this into the front of the pack. Everybody's going to make a vote. We're going to walk in there. We're going to vote for peace versus war. And that's if we get a chance that the war doesn't pop off before we get there. They're definitely going to pop the war off before we get there. You think so? 100%. They're definitely popping the war off before. They already popped it off. But they're definitely going to escalate it before we get there. With the involvement of American boots-on-the-ground troops? I'd, pro- I'd, I'd say they, they may hold off on that. Oh, well, then we're at war because we're bombing every day. Yeah. The oh, inv- it's coming. The inventory the inventory's getting turned it's regular. Coming. No, they're calling. Look, right now. Right now, uh, you know, uh, the, the Ayatollahs uh, turning off his, his Johnny Carson reruns. You know, they've been running all night. He's, he's p- picking up his ice cream bowl, his Ben and Jerry's. You know, he's sitting in, this, in the sink. Uh, he, he's slapping his... his, his uh, putting the his, turban his, back He's on. slapping his 25-year-old white girlfriend on the ass. And he's putting his turban back on in the thob. And, and they're going to get ready to go ahead and attack Israel and escalate it for the whole, for the whole theater. And that's, that's, how I, that's how I see it. I mean, and even even if that's not the case, that that might be a, that might be a caricature of it. But when you give a wait, con- wait, wait, wait a second, wait. when you give a country six billion dollars, whether that's the way it's happening or not, the six billion dollars came from Johnny Carson, white women, and Ben and Jerry's. That's well, yes. But I do so, want to say, and everybody needs to know from a news per- the from news, the rhinos, by the way, from the news <laughs> that matters perspective, mm-hmm. the defense minister of Israel has come out and said that if the hostages are not returned by, by March, March 10th, 10th, which is the first day of Ramadan, Ramadan. they're going to attack, that would be the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, are going to attack Hezbollah. No, Ham, uh, oh, Hamas uh, in Rafah, yeah, where Rafa, the last yeah. million and a half Palestinians yeah. are holed up. It's like the last stand. And they're going to bomb the innocent people in Rafah. Well, let's just say uh, from a, the perspective to put And the, even if you support Israel, I mean, even if you're, even even if you're a pro-Israel, even if you 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 buy the 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 narrative that Israel is surrounded by its enemies, which it is, we don't know which of these enemies are paid to do what they're doing and which aren't. We don't know how much of it is theater and how much of it is genuine hatred. And these are things that are important to understand. Although the net result's still the same, right? whether my enemy was paid to come kill me or whether they genuinely hate me at a at a very root level doesn't really matter. They're still coming to kill me. Um, even, even, even if you are on that side of the football, um, Gaza is already destroyed. Bombing the remaining Palestinians at Rafa's crossing can't be seen as anything other than uh, a sort of, uh, uh, propaganda trap to put Israel at the center of, of, uh, humanitarian hatred all around the world, the UN, all the other countries. I want to put it in some context for the for the listeners and the viewers. About 100,000 Palestinians have been killed and wounded since uh, May 7th. That's about 4% of the population of Gaza. So to put that into American numbers, that would be as if 13 million Americans died nine months or were wounded in nine months. That would mean every single family either lost a family member, had a wounded family member, or knew someone. We haven't had that kind of killing in the United States since the Civil War. And the Civil War, what was the Civil War? The Civil War was a war, but it was really the effort of the North to destroy the culture of the South. And that effort still is ongoing today. That's what That was the birth of the administrative state. And I think what Israel is aiming to do is to take an administrative control over the Palestinian people and destroy Palestinian culture. So if people want to make an argument if it's war or genocide, yeah, I'm not going to walk into that water. But it is cultural genocide. 
because they've come right out and said that they intend to de-radicalize the Palestinians that remain in the Gaza. Well, how do you de-radicalize people after you kill four, five, six, seven? The numbers just keep going up. How do you de-radicalize them? So they're breaking the will of the Palestinian people. Their goal, I don't know if they're going to be able to succeed, but it seems to me as an observer Mm -hmm. that they're trying to break the will of the Palestinian people to maintain their culture. Well, and we, but we did it. I mean, and that's the, that's the reality. One time, we did it. We did it here in the West. We're responsible. We, we are. We are. I mean, if not, I mean, look, you can't, <laughs> and this is, this is the real hallmark of, of the, the lunacy, lack of logic, incoherence, morally, that's taking place in, in America's political culture, especially with the, the post-World War II democratic liberal order types, right? You can't say that Donald Trump is responsible for January 6th because he didn't tweet quick enough. He didn't call for a, a, a cease, uh, you know, in, in D.C. or, or, or his, his general rhetoric leading up to it. Like, you can't hold Donald Trump responsible for January 6th and think we all, as the American people, aren't culpable for what's happening there in, in the Middle East. I mean, that... That's that's not a that's that's not a degree. Of, there's not a degree of separation between our culpability and what's happening in the Middle East. If you're going to place that kind of blame on Donald Trump, in fact, I think we're more responsible, a, a far bit more responsible. Why don't you talk about this a little bit? Just draw it all a little bit. No, I'm, I'm so we. How can you think that America uh, that that Donald Trump is is responsible for something in a in a secondary way, in a tertiary way, but What's happening in the Middle East is completely detached from you as an American citizen, whether you be Democrat or Republican, whether you be pro-Israel or pro-Hamas. And the unifier is tax money. Your money goes to every side of the trade there, knowingly, from people who know exactly what's going on there, on every side of the trade. They know exactly what's going on. They know exactly who's funding who. They know when their money goes to Egypt that some gets siphoned off to the you know the 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 Muslim Brotherhood. They know when their money goes to that's carrying charges. They know when their money <laughs> goes to Russia, let's say that some of it falls back to Syria, and they, they they know that some of the money ends up there in Iran. We just send them Iran money directly. That's why I say the Ayatollah must have been in Jerry's and Johnny Carson because you know that you know that's a little gift He's bag on that the comes payroll. With, that's a little gift bag that comes with that's, six billion dollars. That's you know? really funny. It's like here's your six billion in cash. And, and a gift bag. In a gift bag. Here's your Gucci Johnny bag. Johnny Carson, Ben Ben and Jerry's. You know, you got you some uh, a Gucci, some a Gucci bag some, for your some white Hermes girlfriend. Some Hermes Thobs. Yeah, yeah. A couple <laughs> alligator purses. Oh, you know, that's funny. You know, you know, you guys don't have those alligators there in Iran. You got to be from Florida to get you some good some good gator skin. Um, yeah, and so I'm just you know, oh. we we're we're on every side of that trade, and and our money's going there, and. And our money has created a situation of war. And look, I'm not saying if our money wasn't there, we wouldn't be, there wouldn't be war there. Because obviously there was war there well before there was an America, right? I mean, they've, they've been fighting there for a long time. But when your money goes in there, it becomes very hard to tell where your money is, is keeping the thing going. I mean, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a blind spot in, in the sort of forensic accounting of where our resources are going and how involved we are, how responsible we are for what's happening there. So we pulled out, <laughs> we'd be able to see it more clearly. You're, you're, you're hitting on something that is uh, really baked into the cake of America. There's a, an American political philosopher and a founder of the country, Thomas Paine. Mm-hmm. And he wrote extensively on exactly what you're talking about. And here we are, all these hundreds of years later, and what Paine said was, was that the purpose of government is to create wars so it can collect taxes. Mm. That war was the racket. He was the first guy that yeah. I've read that said war was a racket. And here we're sitting here hundreds of years later, and the idea of war being a racket, that the purpose of war is to give a reason for governments to tax the people. And why do they tax the people? Which is to keep them poor so they can control them, right? This, this idea was around in 1776, and we backslid the whole point of the 1776 experiment was to overthrow this business model. 
that was the point. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, why didn't we just stay in the empire in the first place? We did. Thank you. Yeah, we actually did. We, it's and, and again, to go back to Israel, it's like, if we're going to do the holy war thing, I was telling a, a friend of mine, another Hebrew of, of, of mine the other day about Israel. Us Christians have to acknowledge Israel as, as, as a biblical matter. I'm fine with that. Doesn't say exactly how we need to do that. And I, I don't like when they, it's just like the profanity. It's like, you know, you, you, you know, you, you, your, your Christian identity is too superficial. If your, if your God fearing identity is too superficial, it just becomes, you know, dishonest at a point. It's, okay. We have a special relationship with Israel. There's a holy war on the horizon. Um, they're, they're willing to do it in Turkey. Erdogan's willing to stand up in front of hundreds of thousands of Turks and say, uh, cross versus the Crescent. The, the, the uh, Iran, the Ayatollah, they say death to America, death to the West. Hell, Hamas and, and, and you know, many of the Palestinians think the same way. I'm not saying that justifies genocide, but war is war. You know, and at a, at a, at a level, and you know, th this is the tough part about, uh, about war. At a level, um, Who's the bully and who's the, well, if you look at it from a military standpoint, military capacity, obviously the West or, or NATO or, you know, any of these international alliances have, have a, a higher capacity for destruction than the, the rebels out there. Uh, but, but if you're in an asymmetrical war, um, the, you know, Israel, I'm sure feels like they are surrounded on all sides. Geographically speaking, they are. And, you know, the, They've already been attacked on all three sides before. This is historical evidence. It's not a, it's not a theory. I mean, they're they're not creating a boogeyman that doesn't exist. The same way that Vladimir Putin could look at the the, the battle with Europe and say that he's been invaded a, a couple of times, and there's always people that want to invade Russia has historical evidence. So us pushing our weapons up on NATO's border, seen as a threat. There's legitimacy to that. Even if you, no matter what you think about it, there's a legitimate claim. Well, Israel already has a bunch of weapons on its border. And so, and even the, the, the dynamic there is, what, where is the solution? I'm not talking about one state or two state. What is the solution long-term? Long-term, there is no solution. And that seems like the best war racket of all. When it, there, there obviously is no solution you could see in the future. Now, the solution they want to create is about money. So even in, even in their solution to war, even in their solution to conflict on the international stage, they're counting on materialism to solve the day. Well, then it's not a holy war. So don't be selling me holy war on Fox News, on Alpha News. Don't be selling me the Muslims are coming. I'm not scared of the Muslims. Y'all are scared of the Muslims, yet you pay them. Yet in China, you put them in concentration camps. I'm not going for it. If it's a holy war, then it's a holy war. And if you want us to fight a holy war as America because of our Christian beliefs, then we're in. We'll fight a holy war. If it's right there on, on the Temple Mount, we'll fight that holy war. That's okay. But don't sell it as a holy war if you think the solutions are going to be materialism. And that is what they think. And that's why they want to do the deal between the Saudis and the, the Israelis. That's why they want to do the deals between the Qataris and the Emiratis and the, and the, and the Israelis. That's why they want to build the pipeline through India instead of China and run it through the, the, the Dead Sea or the Red Sea or, or the Mediterranean Sea. That's why they, they want to come up with all these geopolitical economic solutions. But then they want to tell me it's about Israel, the Bible. You got to be kidding me. That's called wrapping your materialism in the cloth of faith. Right. But this, this is really, this is great. I mean, I feel like I'm sitting down with the, are you sure you're not the reincarnation of Thomas Paine? You sound just, I just read a ton of Thomas Paine, and... Was he black? Well, if you're looking at AI, he probably <laughs> was. <laughs> if, you, if you plug him in on Google, he'd come oh, up like that. No, actually, when he died, only six, he was a great thinker, a philosopher of his time, only six people went to his funeral because he trashed everyone. The hatchet man. Yeah. He was the, he was the I, 17... I could see that being my, my funeral. He's got yeah. 1776 hatchet man thing going on but you're saying something that really because this is an election of ideas for me 
what I want to do between now and the election, what I'm doing on, on my podcast, what I'm going to keep doing here on Hebrews with you. We got to take apart this post World War II Democrat liberal order. What is it based on? Well, its fundamental root is science. So let's not call it some kind of spiritual or philosophical movement. Its, its building block is uh, Fat Boy, the atomic bomb. Mm-hmm. That was its, that's what got it going. Yeah. That's what established its hegemony. So it wasn't an idea or a philosophy like the philosophy of Christ, which was love your neighbor as itself. There was no atomic bombs forcing people to be Christians. They adopted Christianity because they believed in the philosophy. Right. No coercion. Now, there was a period of convert or die, and that was not a failure of Christ. That was a failure of men who wrapped them, their unholy ambitions in the cloth of Christ. But the, the, there is a difference between being coerced at the end of a bayonet, which became at the end of a B-52 <laughs> carrying a nuclear bomb. That's not really... The, the word order is great, kind of like the Wehrmacht order, okay? <laughs> We're going to send you an order. You will be a Democrat liberal. That's what they said to the world. (laughs) And they would threaten the world with nuclear destruction regularly, as we're being threatened right now. Mm -hmm. But the the science, the science was the cornerstone. And the next block was free trade. And that was an idea that was really promoted by the Thomas Paines that were tumbling out of the divine right of kings. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, how do we get past this paradigm of the divine right of kings. And that's what opened up this period of democracies and republics. And what they believed at that time was that commerce, commerce, materialism, would bind the world together in a much better condition for humanity. It was an experiment. It failed. That post-World War II Democrat liberal order is a failed paradigm. Now, the question we have to ask ourselves as voters, that I'm asking Well, we'll see if it failed. We'll see. I'm not so sold that it that it failed. I'm sure it failed. Nope. Yes. Nope. It, it has <laughs> it has not failed yet. I, it's it's it only it only it only failed. It's on life support. It's definitely on life. Well, I mean, you know, it's in the hospital. The narr- the narrative is on life support. But when people control the narrative the way this narrative is controlled, it, things can things can easily be patched up. We've seen that. We were on the brink of where everybody thought, oh, I mean, I remember the headlines on the day that, that Israel was attacked. Oh, oh, there it is. This is the, this is, this is, this, the, the this is it. Like Michael Jack, like, this is it. This is the end. You know, when Russia went into you, this is it. You know, it, when, 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 when China, whenever China starts to, to go into top, this is it. That one might actually be it. I'm not sure, but probably not. You know, the, I think the, the Ukraine thing is very potent. The, yeah, but, you know, Vladimir Putin said it. I mean, we keep, we keep, we just have this, you know, the American culture, by many standards, leads the, the culture worldwide. America is the global cultural leader, whether it's through the post-World War Democratic Liberal Order, geopolitically, or just from a media standpoint, okay? America's cult, we lead the world culturally. People can say what they want. They can trash Americans. They can say, everybody's looking at America. Everybody's watching America. Man, every, every, come on. How many, how many little French, uh, uh, how many little French hole in the walls do we have here in America? I mean, everybody wants their French, you know, bakery and their nice little French, you know, uh, you know, eatery. I get that. It's very, you know, in posh, bold. very posh. Yeah. To have, you know, your little international cuisine. Okay. But I mean, I mean, commercially. We don't have no French restaurants like Mc, like they got McDonald's in France or McDonald's in China. They don't have McDonald's, but they got a variation of it, right? So, I mean, culturally, people watch in America. Can I, can I just interject one thing here? Okay. The Chinese, mm-hmm. their culture, they own, they bought a lot of Hollywood now, mm-hmm. okay? So we're mm-hmm. starting to get a lot of their, the whole martial arts movie craze, that's Chinese, come right out of Hong Kong. Listen. Chinese speak English. We don't speak. Uh, we don't speak Mandarin. In the story, they speak English. No, nah, you know what? When we go on down to Walmart, they speak English. We are we no now, the materialism talking, culturally, culturally, culturally. They speak. They learned it from us. They're American. Well, they used to be. 
No, they're American now. They're what we wish we could be. They're American. They speak English. They're radical materialists. They actually learned it from us. Before we came there, they weren't even like that. They're American. My point is, American culture leads the world. We, we're, we're, the, we're the global leader on this thing. If we, if we believe that materialism can solve all things, which we, we kind of show we, we believe, everybody else is going to believe the same thing. Everybody else follows. So, you know, we, we really, and my, my point in saying that with, with respect to whether the, the, the story can keep going or not, um, even with Vladimir Putin, you know, it's, oh, you know, we just wanted to be in. We, we wanted to be in NATO. We wanted to come up with, uh, uh, you know, military collaboratives that, that, that help, you know, missile defense systems against our would-be enemies. Which would-be enemies is that? I mean, what, what, what are they actually talking about? Who is the enemy? Who is the enemy out there that, you know, if, if Russia comes together with the UE in America on a, a, a what, you know, okay, so who are we worried about then? China's already, China's safe because everybody's at the T. Everybody's taken, drawn from the well. China's safe. If the, if the, if the, what what they believe is that the the, the trade the the economics the money will solve the issues because people have told them it's okay to do so we've we've conceded that that's that's okay this is a, this our doing globalism is a is a reflection of us and that's what people really don't they don't like that they don't want to hear that they don't want to hear that that the 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 allowance of of the global politics to be they, the way they are is a reflection of the people worldwide. That's why I said it's free people all around the world, not just the free people of America. It's the free people there in China. It's the free people there in Russia. It's the free, all of their leaders would like a little bit more of the pie. They'd like a little bit big, bigger piece of, the, piece of the action. They'd like a little bit more power. And that's what the fight is about. We still, we still let our leaders lie to us and tell us that the fight's about the identities, these, these sub-identities. These people are fighting for their own interests. Even Russia. I mean, Vladimir Putin can say he's fighting for the Russian people, and some people can believe that, and I just call bullshit. Because when, when I hear you say, we want to join NATO, you, you, you kind of have, have admitted that, that NATO's legitimate. I mean, I got to ask myself when I hear stuff like, is Xi's the same way? Now we'd like to, you know, have a global partnership and trade. I don't know why I gave Xi a, a German accent there, probably because he reminds me of Hitler. but. I'm just saying, you know, they, they kind of talk, you know, like, like globalism is fine. None of them really come right out and reject it, you know, and, and that's where I'm saying that they're rejecting American hegemony. hegemony re yes. And that's leadership. not the same thing. No, they, I, this is very okay. important point to make. The world has given over to trade as the solution to the existential crises that all yes. citizens are facing. They don't like America at the front of the game. And the reason they don't like America- They want a bigger part of the pie. It's not, I don't think it's that. I think it's deeper than that. Well, that's one I element. think America, no, I think America being at the head of the, the snake here, I don't mean to say the head of the snake. I'm not, that's not a metaphor for anything. I'm just saying that America being the, at the head of the table puts a kind of safeguard on human rights and freedoms because it's baked into our, our constitutional beliefs. So even when we perpetrate war around the world, we have to keep the thin veneer of rules. Rules. The rules-based order. They, these people don't want to do that. And that is a real argument for America to stay at the well, head of the table. Well, that's a really important thing you're saying relative to what's the end game in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Because the last all out is Israel. No, the la where this country, the United States of America went all out was World War II. Right. That was the last time, as the Germans like to call it, total Krieg, complete war. We're not taking prisoners. You take a prisoner, you feed them out of your rations there, partner. And there's this kind of brutality is underplayed. There was no prisoners being taken, and there was a lot of raping, a lot of robbing. It was a war of conquest. And what happened was German culture was substantially altered. 
wasn't totally destroyed, but it was substantially altered. Japanese culture was substantially altered. These are cultural wars, wars mm -hmm. of cultural genocide. We, we didn't do that in Korea. We certainly didn't do it in Vietnam. Vietnam's our ally now. Yeah. And uh, we restrained the weapons that were used. There was no restraint in World War II. Because I'll tell you, if the Japanese hadn't surrendered, they'd have kept going. They'd have turned that place into a parking lot. So war traditionally, traditionally, before we had modern weapons was, hey, you know, if you lost, they killed the men, took the women sometimes as slaves, kept the children sometimes as slaves, and the cultures were destroyed. The people went away. Cultural genocide. That's a, that's a um, war crime now. We've Going back to that rules-based order. Mm -hmm. So how do you solve any problem? That's what I'm saying. Well, I think it's a great insight. <laughs> what you're saying is they have regulated war yes. so that it's a perpetual, perpetual racket. racket. That's what it is. Yeah. And so, I mean, Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. I, I, he was right on a level well beyond what he could even see. I didn't see. know Thomas Paine was a black man. Holy yeah. moly, that's hilarious. No, it's not <laughs> <laughs> but we look at how look at the amount of, of progress that we we backslid. We but my, and my my point is when I say can we can the, is it failed? It's only fa and it could it it rests upon the edge of a blade. Is is it failed? Is all dependent on whether or not people see more value in the the fundamental ideas that help build this. Well, country, you're going really deep tonight. This or, is deep. Or do this, they do they? This is deep. Do they feel good about? The, the high. So what this is why I've been saying when we're 501 saying, C3 jerk offs. Everybody in the Whitlock audience was like, you keep going back to the same thing and it is, you keep saying the same thing. It's the same issue. Well, you're bringing this the all has not stopped. You're bringing this completely full circle because what we're saying, we ta always talk about this British business model. It's a jerk off business model. Slavery, drugs, and piracy. Yes. What are we going to do about it? All allows you to say. What are we going to do about it? What you're yeah. saying is yeah. any elected leader, a leaders around the world, they're all in on it. Everybody accepts it. We've decided that's who we are. Right. And what is the one philosophical ideology movement in world history that stands against that? Christianity. That's correct. Christ. That's the only one. I'm almost going to get emotional. This is, a very, this is a very heavy conversation for me because, you know, you, you get in the middle of the fight. And then all of a sudden you say, what am I fighting for? What am I fighting against? That's what you're saying. Who are these people? It doesn't matter who wins or loses, because after the war is over, nobody gets taken out. I mean, they're not going to kill all the Palestinians. They're going to stay there, and they're going to go get more arms, and it's all going to start up again. Mm -hmm. Same thing in the South China The long con, the great long con. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. And it's all a rejection of love thy neighbor as you love yourself. It's all an overthrow of Christ. 100%. And I, I, all I'm saying is, and look, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that to be cynical or uh, to be pessimistic. It can change. And this is what I told my friend about Israel. If we want to fight a holy war, there are righteous and divine wars. But let's, let's call it what it is. And let's be sure that we have the righteous position. Let's see, but I don't think people really want to do that accounting to make sure they're righteous enough to, to be able to wage war in the name of God, in the name of holy. It's quite a step, isn't it? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, people are real. You know, that's your 501c3 that's, Christians. Whoa, that's called putting it out there. Yeah, that, that's your 501c3 Christians. They, you know, they don't, don't, don't curse. <laughs> you, know, you know, Donald Trump's a little too, too immature to be the president, right? It, really? Well, what's more, what's more immature than thinking you could hold everybody in the world at, at gunpoint and, and preserve peace? I think you're immature. Indefinitely. I think you people are immature. I think Donald Trump calling it for what it, I, I think, a matter of fact, I think it's so dumb. I think that, that that type of thinking is so underdeveloped intellectually, philosophically, first principles, it actually justifies Donald Trump's behavior. Where they, where some would call Donald Trump and myself too, uh, immature for using profanity or, or or kind of flying off the handle and and going off cuff, going off script, I think that their their belief 
that that this thing can can hold up without severe casualty. It could hold up, but not without severe casualty and loss of freedom. Oh, they can hold it up. What they'll have to do in order to hold it up is is the scary it's part. Tyranny. Yeah, that's that's the scary part. So that to, to think that we could hold this up this way without severe uh, loss and casualty is so stupid. It just actually, I think Donald Trump's been pretty nice. When I really started to look at it, well, considering that he's the beta test of just tyranny for everyone, the way he's been treated. So, I mean, we've got these leaders like Bannon that have just been treated in, in, of course, if you look at it from the other street corner, they think, you know, they deserve it. But if you're looking at it from my street corner, I'm saying, whoa, you know, for those of us that are in, in the public eye, uh, it actually is a risk because we, there is a tyrannical force that's along the lines of what, you know, the Russians used to say, show me the man and I'll find you the crime. Right. And that's just a very un-American kind of it is. orientation. It is. And again, I, I, I go back to Israel. I just, I, because I, this is the root issue. It's going to be the root issue. It's going to be the last, it's going to be the, the final frontier. And I said to my, my good friend, I said, listen, because he took exception to, to me saying, uh, you know, uh, to comparing the aid to Israel to the aid to everywhere else and say everybody has to pay, that the people in Israel are not like the people of posh Europe. And I, there's a lot of truth to that, right? I mean, all the people in Israel serve in the military in some capacity, whether it's watered down or not. There is a sort of national duty and, and, and honor, and which is by nature tied to the religious right there in Israel in some capacity. I mean, the, the, the religious, Israel is a secular nation by most standards, but there is a profound religious cohort within it. And most of it by, you would agree, is a lot of the undercurrent of the military, right? Uh, there, there's a- there, I'm letting you go. I, I mean, I, I, mean well, I, I see it a little bit differently. Well, I, I, think, I think the more nationalist element in Israel is what many would deem as a far right sort of disposition that crosses over into a more religious Israel, a more orthodox Israel. Well, that's certainly what the goal of the religious is. Yes. And that's that uh, uh, alliance. Between Bibi and, and the and the Chabad or Chabad, right. Yeah. You know, there there is a there's and that that's new. That's twenty five years mm-hmm. old. I mean that's since Shit, the seventies. That's not new. No, because when that state was formed, there was no religious people there. Right, they, but I'm saying they that's poured in been halfway through. Halfway through, they came because yeah. they had to. They they felt they had to preserve the right, the nation of Israel. I mean, Bibi actually did that, and many he's kind of responsible for that, right? Brought him in. Well, he not only brought him in, but he made arms and capitalism. Uh, it was a it was a military and national. It was defense it strategy. was a socialist country that he yes. opened it up. Because he thought a little freedom might bring in more cash. Yes. To run the material military machine. So he could machine. run the, the military. Right. They, 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 in that way. So again, to go to go back to what I was saying, um, yes, yes, there is, there is the the. I, I do think that Israel is a bit different than Europe. So I will amend in in saying that everybody has to pay. As though it's all equal. Well, let me ask a question. I, got I never question. said I got that. Question. I never said they had to pay equally. I got a question. But do have to pay. I have a question for you. Okay. Okay. Just to try to make the feelings of American Jewry clear, mm-hmm. because someone like me, who's in the nationalist movement, it's a lot of there's a lot of pressure in here yeah. to 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 live up to the standards of America First on this issue. So here's here's where the rubber hits the road. Mm-hmm. Let's say Putin. Mike Johnson holds the line, no money's coming, and the Russians just, it just collapses. Like South Vietnam collapsed, because if you want to remember and get historical, the Democrats refused to fund the South Vietnamese in 1974, and guess what happened? South Vietnam collapsed, and we just have the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. So this whole thing about what traitors these people are, hey, you know, I got a memory I was there. The rest of you people, maybe you're younger than me, but they cut the Vietnamese loose and said, we want peace. We want peace. Mm-hmm. Kind of was America first in its own kind of way. Mm-hmm. From the Democrat Party. Right, from the Democrats. Okay, so let's say the money doesn't come and Putin overruns the Ukraine. Mm-hmm. What happens to the Ukrainians? 
They've come under the governance of Russia. Okay. Let's say the money dries up for Israel mm-hmm. and a billion Muslims take over Israel. No, that won't happen. That, I'm just, it's a theoretical. Okay. Let's say Israel falls. Yes. And it's now ruled by, let's say, Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran. Right. What happens to the Jews? Um, killed. Okay. So the Ukrainians become part of the Russian Federation, and there's a process of reconciliation. It's an interfamilial fight that leads to a new kind of politics. Well, your boy Muammar Gaddafi, your boy Muammar Gaddafi made the great point if you go back and watch his 2009 speech uh, at the United Nations. Just before Hillary had him clipped. Before Hillary and, and Obama uh, did, did, did the deed, um, did the, the dirty business of, of the global uh, puppet, Clean up. Yeah, puppet masters. Um, he makes the claim. He says, we took the Jews in. We don't hate the Jews. You all hate the Jews in Europe. You killed the Jews in, in World War I and World War II. You burned them. You gassed them. We took them in. We took them in, and we'll take them in again when Europe... When Europe abandons them again, we'll take them in again, as we did before. Cousins. Cousins. Now, with that being said, everybody in the Middle East doesn't think like Muammar Gaddafi, which is why they sort of kicked him out of the Arab Union, and even the African Union sold him out, because after the United States clearly assassinated him for political purposes, Nobody from the African Union really, and that's why I can't stand all these black bourgeoisie sellouts <clears> and their <throat> pan-African bullshit. The litmus test for the, 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 the leaders of Africa is Muammar Gaddafi. The litmus test was them. Don't be telling me that these African leaders now are rising up in their socialist, communist uh, revolt, now they're tying to Russia. These people are sellouts. The litmus test came and went. It was Muammar. Muammar, whether you like him, hate him, whether you agree with his politics, he was he a socialist, a green book, doesn't matter. That what he was rejecting was very clear. It was right there on the line, and they killed him for it. And the other people in the African Union, they continue to do business. Okay, you traded business. Now you're doing it with China, Russia. It's the same globalist. The money goes from America to China, and then it comes to you. What's the difference? What's the difference? If it, the, the, the independence would make you different. The independence gives you a sort of sovereignty. Sovereignty isn't just political or economic. It's spiritual. Because you can, you, you can better account for your actions when they're your actions. When you're responsible for everybody's actions, it's hard as hell to be accountable for everybody's actions. It's impossible. You can't be. But when you put boundaries on it, it all, it's, you know, it's also a safeguard for your own, your own impulse. You know? and, and so as soon as the African Union, oh, well, you know, well, killed Gaddafi, next up. Sell out. I actually scared everybody, I'm sure. Yeah, come on. I mean, scared is scared. Scared is if you're scared, go no, to church. No, I'm saying when you watch a leader get, be deposed I by the post World War II Democrat liberal order, and this guy did not I get die it. Pretty. But we could all say that, well, then we should all run for the hills now because of what they're doing to Trump. I mean, it's ipso facto. I would it's say ipso same. facto, there's probably uh, some a lot truth of people who are you, doing that. Right. Yeah. No, I, I get, but I'm just saying from a, for, from a first principle standpoint. Don't tell me that there's this righteousness there on the continent of Africa from the leaders or, or politically, because I'm not buying it. Okay. Momar is still a litmus test. When a leader pops up from Africa and then re uh, deposes or referendums what happened to Momar as the basis of their politics, and they stand against the globalist alliance, not asking for more of the, pe- uh, of the pie, right? Then we'll talk. Okay. That's not my, we'll move past that. When it comes to Israel, Will will this is a this is a, this is a this is a question. Now I tend to think that what Momar tried to convey in his speech is a little more enlightened sort of thinking. If certain other people there in the Middle East took over and overrun Israel, I think they would try and kill the Jews. And they say it. I mean, it's not hidden. There's a real hatred there on both sides. But the 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 catch twenty two with this. But that, their scenario is Ukraine doesn't have the military capacity that Israel does. So there won't be no running over Israel the same way that, that Russia is able to run over Ukraine. Ukraine don't have no nukes. Ukraine don't have no missile defense systems. Ukraine doesn't have uh, an incredible counterintelligence. Their counterintelligence is American. Their counterintelligence is strictly the five eyes. The five eyes relies on Israel for their intelligence in that part of the world. It's night and day militarily. 
over the long run, and, and I told my friend, I said, over the long run, if Israel is not prepared to defend itself in perpetuity against all of its enemies a- around them, then it's untenable. And we have to deal with that reality. Well, then let me ask you a question of what you're saying is Israel's. Are you saying I said Israel it already? You're saying Bring Israel. Them out of there. You're saying Israel's self-sustaining from a military perspective. No, they're not self-sustaining. Okay, they're more. They're more. What sus- you're saying is, is they've got nukes. They're more self-sustaining than Ukraine. So that puts a significant difference on the amount of, theoretically, the amount of aid that's needed in either situation. Now, I think we shouldn't give any money to Ukraine. Not another penny. But the aid to Israel is in question as well as a referendum on the entire post-World War II democratic liberal order and military industrial complex. There has to be a referendum on the aid in Israel because the aid with Israel Israel also becomes this this contingent sort of management of the whole region by giving the aid to Egypt and then giving the aid to, uh, you know, Iran. And then if you go back to the start the, of this war, the, the start of this war, this recent chapter. Is, is certainly from a geopolitical perspective because Israel and the Saudis were getting ready to make a peace treaty and open up commercial relations. Right. So if you're going to go back to, okay, commercial relations is going to solve this problem, well, they weren't even going to take a chance of it solving the problem. So there are definitely some people there that have a, a spiritual or a uh, non-materialistic desire to pursue this war. Otherwise, why didn't everybody just get on the payroll and get done with it? The, somebody is serious about this killing. Somebody, no, and and I agree, and that's what I'm saying. And what I'm all I'm saying is, if it's going to be a holy war, let's get clear about it. The money is getting in the way. The money is 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 blurring the lines. The, the and and this was what Kissinger and the, that part of it is real. That part of the 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 free trade you know solution to for, for world peace is real, but it's not final. And it's not working. It's not working. It just it just kind of it kind of you know blurs the the vision of of everyone. So is this a clash makes it a, of, confused? Is this kind of a weird uh, clash of materialism with a kind of a dark spirituality? That's exactly what it is. Absolutely, that's okay. a great way to put it. Yeah, no, and I, I think that you know they they would. Um, you know, there's some real spiritual players over there on there the dark side. There's some things more important than money on the dark side. Yeah, they're willing to die for it. Of course, they think they're on the light side and we're on the maybe, dark side. Maybe. Again, I don't well, it's think, not beyond me that the dark side of the spiritual movement is a is a is a well, is an operation. I was alive when Muammar Gaddafi took over and lived. Think of the difference between Muammar and the Ayatollah. I mean, Muammar, it, it almost the it makes the Ayatollah seem like a caricature. But the when 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 Gaddafi took over in Libya, I remember how he was fenced. You know, Reagan bombed Libya. I think he killed some of Gaddafi's family members Mm -hmm. trying to kill Gaddafi. Mm -hmm. You know, take a look at Saddam Hussein. Not exactly a a pleasant character. I just watched on YouTube. No less pleasant than ours. No, but I'm saying I just watched on YouTube. I'll take I'll take Muammar Gaddafi over Victoria Nuland. Everybody needs to go look at on YouTube on Saddam's sentencing. I don't know who he was before, but when he was sentenced he painted himself as a believer who was being unrighteously hung by a materialist puppet of the United States. And he said it just like that. You're a stooge. You're a puppet. You're a puppet of the great Satan. So was he a great leader in that region? I mean, when you pop up in that part of the stability. world, look at there was Na- stability. Look at uh, uh, Nasser, Nasser from Egypt. There's another one. Yep. Or uh, Mossadegh in, in, in uh, Persia, in Iran. Mm-hmm. When great leaders come up, nationalist leaders, populist nationalist leaders that are rejecting the IMF and the United Nations. Globalism. They're rejecting it. Yeah. They're killed. Whether they're communist, whether they're Whatever Christian, they are. Muslim. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right. And, and, but see, us here in America, we, we have trouble getting past that paradigm. You know, if you watch enough Fox News, you'll you'll be caught up in the oh, he was a Muslim He's socialist. A caric- uh, it's caricatures, caricatures. Come on, that's I'll why give I, me give me Muammar Gaddafi over Victoria Nuland any day. She retired every day. She retired every day. She left the government. Give this me week. Muammar Gaddafi over Victoria Nuland every day, every day of every fucking year, every single day. 
not nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 times, I'm taking Omar Gaddafi over Victoria Nuland. I'll take Omar Gaddafi before Joe Biden. Wow, that's a taste test right there. Oh, yeah. Well, Nick, I mean, the Nikki Haley voters say they're going to vote Joe Biden. And so are the Ron DeSantis voters. They do. And I will take Muammar Gaddafi over Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. And their thing is something like, and this is another crazy litmus test for the American people. Their thing is like, Muammar Gaddafi was a bad man because he, well, I think he, with with the big crime that he used white phosphorus or something like that. He, he, He bombed his own people. There were rebel groups inside Libya that Muammar Gaddafi claimed were put up to it by the CIA, which wouldn't be beyond the stretch of our imagination. At least it shouldn't be unless you're a total cuck. And you, and you go on X and you say things like, the government's not nearly as corrupt as people think. That's the new Democrat shtick. I mean, that's how far we've come. We've come from the, the assassination of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, JFK, RFK. We've come, the Fred Hampton, okay, Iran-Contra. Iran all the way to now the Democrat, the, 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 the online chill bot or straight up sheep Democrat shilling saying that the government's not even that corrupt. But when George Floyd is killed there in the street saying the whole system is guilty, just theater. Okay. If you know about the government's actual corruption, then the CIA planting rebel forces or, or uh, trying to stage a coup in Libya wouldn't shock anybody. I think they're saying that uh, all that corruption is actually righteousness. It wouldn't shock us. I mean, if what you're saying is these are the same people that were in the streets, yeah, right, on the George Floyd thing, what they're saying is, is that the foreign policy and the internal policy of the government run for their benefit, no matter what it does, so they're okay with it. They're not constitutionalists. They're unmoored from the history of the country. They're just unmoored <laughs> from it. Yeah, that's fucking retarded. Um, they, I think they claim that Gaddafi used gas and you know, nerve gas or something like that, and he, or he bombed his own, bombed his own people. And um, you know, that's that's a that's a variation of of something that America hasn't really devolved to. We haven't had to devolve to one because we don't have any exterior power, uh, foreign entity that has the ability to really spark up a, a, a real kinetic coup in America. It's not something we have to worry about. Like, despite them trying to paint January 6th as this great overthrow of the government, the way that our government is structured and works, the January 6th uh, protesters could have took everybody in the United States Congress and Senate, and the American government would still work perfectly fine. <clears throat> That's scary. There's plenty of, con- well, there's plenty of contingency <clears throat> That's for, very scary what you're saying there, young man. Yeah, it is. It and we could is. spend the rest of the podcast just, just talking talk about, about that one. <laughs> That's You stumbled into a rat hole there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is scary. But true, nonetheless. I mean, there are contingencies. What you're saying Every time is the Congress, not contingency. You're saying that there's a government that runs without our elected officials. Well, of course. But no, yes. And every time the, every time the government meets all at once, State of the Union, for example, they they did a they did a series on this Netflix series designated survivor, but every I mean there's a there's a chain of command there's a you know every time the entire Congress Senate and the President meet all at once Vice President they all have to meet at once what do they think happens if all of them die the American government just ceases to run no there's a contingency somebody else down the trough is going to become the President of the United States and the the, the thing will continue to go okay so. That's the way our government works. It don't work like that in Libya. You actually got to worry about a real coup. Like if me and my seven boys get, roll, roll up, roll up <laughs> on the palace. <laughs> they roll up on the or palace. Or if, if me and my seven boys in the palace get taken out, somebody else is going to have control of this country. Jump ball. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's real. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that would be the lack of institutions you're talking about. Right. When things are built around right. one strong man. Right. And that was the problem with Gaddafi. When Gaddafi, I think he was in the early 70s, maybe the mid-70s is when he come up. He was Colonel Gaddafi at the time, and he was really young, and he was good-looking and charismatic, and he went right after the West. And he just, he was railing against globalism. We just didn't understand it 
in those kind of terms at that time. And, he did. Well, and what I'm saying is, when you live in that type of when you live in that type of culture and that type of environment, your response to rebels and dissidents is going to be much different. Vlad, <laughs> Vladimir Putin the same way. I mean, there's you know he he li- he lives he's in a similar kind of situation, even though Russia's much bigger, but the institutions aren't any more solid. Let's be honest. That's kind of the that's one of the the real um, underdeveloped parts of Russia, right? Is their system of government? I mean, it does have a sort of m- mafia, autocratic, you know, sort of military, you know, whoever the. I mean, any if, if Vladimir Putin dies, it'd be a jump ball. There'd be killings in Russia just to figure out who's going to be next up. You know what I'm saying? In America, it wouldn't be like it'd be like you know we're going to go behind closed doors and shell a little money and try and figure out how we can influence whoever a wise men would meet. Yes, in Russia, it's going to be some straight up killing to figure out. Some people going to go miss, missing, missing. <laughs> okay. People seem to go missing there all the time. They're probably going to go missing before it happens because the assassination has probably already been conspired on with the people. I mean, so it's it's different in other places in the world. So you can't sit here in comfortable America where the theater is very well produced. We have very good theater here. It's the, it's the most well-produced theater in the world. Kind of safe. Very safe. Very vanilla. Very vanilla. Okay? So other places, you know, there's, there's Lornos, and then there's Pornos, and then there's Hardcore Porn. I'm not promoting porn. I'm this just saying. All of a sudden, I'm thinking about rap. I start thinking okay. about vanilla ice. You know, you know the, what we do here in America <laughs> is no less corrupt. It just looks a little bit more polite on the surface. Much how we like our politicians. That's why we're getting our ass kicked because Xi and 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 Vladimir Putin don't have that thin veneer of politeness. They don't have that that thin veneer of of polished puppetry going on, and they're kicking our ass right now. So we we have that. So it's very, very ignorant for us to sit here in that posh sort of reality and go, how a Muammar Gaddafi dealt with the rebels and the dissidents in Libya is the measure by which we should judge him. And then we create a reprieve for Barack Obama and all the people he killed. Or the involvement there in Libya, uh, stoking the fire of rebel forces. And then using it as propaganda. Same thing in Ukraine. Is Vladimir Putin solely to blame for the, the Ukrainians that have been, been killed in, in, in this war? Or is NATO Michael, the, Michael does NATO take said any? So. Michael McFaul said so. Well, of course, I mean, the, of course the, he would. Yeah. The, the, uh, the attempt, I, you know, this is a good coming back around because what you said earlier, this is on everybody. And what we have here in this theater is this ability to distance Scapegoat. ourselves. From our responsibility as American mm-hmm. citizens, in fact, we're encouraged to do so, and in fact, that's a normal human. Uh, oh, hey, man, it's not my fault. It's not. My, I'm out. It's their fault. His right. fault. And let's talk about politicians constantly, and you know, turn them into totems, into power animals, where we can place all of our uh, denied whatevers, whatever it is. Instead, hey, of, ain't the term scapegoat a, a Jewish term? As a matter of fact, it might be Yom Kippur. Where the where the priest would uh the 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 rabbi put the sins on the uh, put the sins of the the people on the goat on the goat that's kind of primitive it's kind of gangster isn't it yeah that's a little gangster yeah because these people also their institutions were a little thin true at that time at that time at that time yeah. I think the institutions of Israel are are starting to wear a little bit thin put a culture under that kind of war institutions well, it's a wear small thin. place you know small. It is a tough. What, what do you think we should? I mean, look. I mean, what what do you think we should do in 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 Israel? Because I, I think this is going to become one of the great dividing lines, even within the America First movement. And and again, if you know, if if we're going to say that the lines have been drawn already, and we're all kind of attached to our 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 uh, our history and our and our former sins and decisions, and we have to play those out and there's no ability to repent because it's gone too far, there is some of that. There are some things that go too far, right? I mean, well, this whole thing, that's what I, I was trying to, since you decided to throw me into the fire and make me come up with an answer, I'm, I, you know, this is... You know, what this, I'm saying before you go is that it maybe it's too far between us and the Arab and Muslim no, world. No, no, everything's iterative. What you're doing is raising questions that have not been well considered. If the what I'm because saying it is, was impossible to consider anything other than what I'm saying is if the Muslim before you go, 
if the Muslim world is, by extension, America, if this is the narrative, this is the propaganda, let's set the stage properly. The narrative and the propaganda is, despite us being on every side of the trade and using money and, and economics and trade to sort of prop up a peace in, in the Middle East region, there is a, there is a religious under, to undertone, undercurrent there that is pervasive and if not checked through economic balance or all out military might will become a scourge and eventually kill the Jews, become a genocide of, of the Jews in Israel. That's the narrative. That's the propaganda. Okay. That, that we'll we start there. Do you believe it's true? Um, it's hard for me to say, I don't live there. Don't, you know, if I, if I, if I live in St. Paul, don't come asking me about beefs in Minneapolis. I just keep it street. You know, I, I how can we know? I don't know. I, all I can tell you is what I hear and what I hear from many people in the Middle East, death to America, death to Israel. So even if it's propaganda, even if that part is staged, words have consequences. Words do have consequences. Now, those words are a lot different than Donald Trump saying, hey, be peaceful, protest peacefully. OK, but they want to hold him accountable with 90 indictments for saying be peaceful. These people are saying death to America and we send them money. They, death to Israel means death to America by extension. They, they're they all clear well, about that. Well, they say both. And, and we send them money. Why are we sending any money to anybody who says death to America? Why, are, why would we send Iran $6 billion when they say death to America? I mean, talk about doing business with the terrorists. What kind of payoff is that? And, and that's, the, that's the sort of pervasive cuckery, too, that we've started to have in this country is like, we're going to pay our enemies? When, when, like I asked before, when, what empires pay the vassal states? What empires pay their enemies? Roman Empire paid Genghis Khan. Well, this, whole, this whole thing that's going well, he on, was on a in, in Gaza right now, underneath bubbling in the cauldron, is peace for hostages. I mean, that's... They took those hostages as a get out of jail free card just before the F, you know the FBI moves in. You know, let's send send the people out and we'll give you a prison sentence. Yeah, but I mean We even, don't have to kill you, young man. Even the but see, but but I mean what kind of what kind of fucking CSI bullshit movies are they watching? They think they can take hostages and that'll be it? Well, that's what they think. What kind of cover story is this? Well, that's what they did. That's why they took those yeah, hostages. Yeah, I know that's why they took them, but, I mean, th that's... And there's a very strong a... movement in Israel, almost as divisive as what's going on here in this country, of people that are saying, let's cut a deal, end the war, and get our people back. Right, right. So these things are real. Right, but, again, you you can cut a deal and get the people back, uh, and that that's that's fine. And then you just start up the racket. Again. Yes, and not only that, though, what, what, what dumbass... It, Arab or Muslim rebel dissident, uh, freedom fighter, if that's what they want to think themselves, fancy themselves, fine. And there is a globalist cabal, and there it is a rightful and righteous and divine fight to have against them. There's kind of a three a, 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 a three player jump ball in that in that regard. Who are the three players? Um, the free people all around the world who believe in Christ, okay. believe in in self governance, uh, the 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 sort of uh, nihilist extremist, radical, evil, terrorist, freedom fighter, rebel fighter, and the globalists. That, that, the people Does who, that make the Christians and the freedom fighters friends? Allies? Absolutely not. No, it does not. And, that, and that's where these leftist Democrats, liberals, and got their shit way twisted. That does not. Bitch, you about to go in there and bomb, and uh, you didn't tell me, and I'm with you? We come into the protest for two different things. I'm coming to minister the truth and the value of American citizenship. You you strapped with a goddamn bomb. Bitch, I didn't say sign up for that. What the this like a guy who who brings you in the car and you hanging out and he decides to rob a bank mid mid ride. <laughs> Bitch, what the what the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? I mean that's what it's like. So you can't just ally up with everybody based on general So there's three general, distinct three distinct yeah. and unrelated groups. In a jump ball, yes. all pursuing their own interests. All pursuing their own interests. So that means between the Christians and the globalists, if there is a resolution of that, there's still that. Or if, if people had spiritual boundaries and we reeled in the empire mm -hmm. and let them pursue their own, you still got the Israel thing to handle. Thank you, Belfort Declaration. Thank you, Crown, for plunking the Jews right down into that sandbox and making it insoluble. Is that a, was that friendly? 
No, that was very thought through. It was very unfriendly. That was a very unfriendly thing to do to the Jews. Oh, it was terrible. I think Momar was right. You people hated the Jews. And you know what he said about the, the Jews in Israel? Let them go back to Europe. We pay, if, if, if America, if America subsidized, now, the, and, and again, for my friends out there who are Jewish, for my friends out there who are Christian, who are thinking of Israel as a religious place, understand this ain't a religious matter. This is a geopolitical and military matter. Now, if you want to make the argument some geopolitical and military matters are religious, you're go- fine. Then we better get clear about it. Because right now, it is, as a matter of fact, it's clear in the other direction. This is not about religion. This is being fenced as a holy war. It's not a, it's, it, it, it may be a holy war, but it's covered by a mountain full of shit. Okay? They're going to make the claim that the land, they, they always bring us back to that. It's about the land. It's about the land of Israel, the land that was promised in the Bible. They always bring us back to the Bible. None of them believe in the Bible. I'm not saying anybody who makes the claim doesn't believe in the Bible, but certainly the people who promulgate the, the power struggle well, there the in Israel, Zionists, they don't believe the, in the Bible. The Zionists use that to justify it. It's right there in the literature. The Zionists, did they were secular, they did not believe in God, and they explicitly pulled on the God card to... to uh, cover to sell the politics to the american christians no to the american jews no what no no to the christians no 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 it said right no no it said right there in their founded in order to get america on board at a political level at a political level at a money level well, at yeah, a money different. level to fund the state but i'm going down to the 501c3 christians because this is the same cohort of people these are the 501c3 rhinos that go, but it's their land. It's their land. It's whose land? It's just like saying you're European to say that they're Israeli. They came from Europe. Their heritage is, you, 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 you know, you're, you're not Europe. They're much closer to Europe than you are. <laughs> you 10th generation Irish, uh, German, uh, uh, Scandinavian, like my 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 great grandparents, you 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 European mutts, okay, here in America. I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. I'm just saying. I mean, no, in Minnesota, we just say that. I'm a Europe. I'm a mutt because this, you know, German, Irish, Catholic, you know, Polish. It's just all blended together over so many generations. The people in Europe are much closer to European heritage than you are. So it'd actually be much more reasonable for them to go back to Europe than it is to you, for you to think of yourself as Europe, European. It's much more reasonable for the Europeans in Israel to go back to Europe than it is for you to pay to protect Europe. Oh, that'd be much more reasonable. Now, again, from, they, they'll bring you back to religion. They'll say, oh, no, you can't do that because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a holy thing. Fine. If we're going to fight the holy war, then let it be known that it's a holy war. Why would anybody fight a holy war for the Jews if they were Christians? That's, oh, a, that's an interesting. That, that's another. Well, that's another. I mean, well, and it's we're no, tumbling down another. Into but, but, and it's important, though. At least ask yourself the fucking question. If you're not willing to ask yourself the question, you're a cuck. You, you deserve chains. Your chains are already psychological because you won't even ask the right questions. We can have, we should be able to have this conversation because this is the linchpin of the new world order. Well, I think this conversation is the start of a long conversation and we will find an answer to this because I was around before anybody ever talked about globalism and the new world order was, the words were spoken as like a secret society and people, if you said new world order, people thought you were a conspiracy theorist. So this working our way into this argument. Should we and, go to war? Should we? I don't know. I don't know if, if we left Israel. I, I have a hunch. Again, like I said, I hear what they say. I hear, I hear what's said. Death to Israel, death to America, and it's not by random people. Okay, we're not going to poll people outside of a, of, a, of a primary with a Joe Biden hat on, okay? These people are high up in positions of power, and they say it in formal settings. Well, let's talk about what the game really is right now. The game is that, and you said this, is I think very insightful. Israel has nuclear weapons, mm-hmm. so they hold the, to use a trump card. They have the trump card. Uh, the Washington Times 
which is a Washington-based newspaper, and I'm not going to say it's any less or more spooky than the Washington Post, because I don't know. They published an article within the last month that they believe, or they have evidence, that Iran currently has six nuclear weapons, and we'll have about 20 or 30 more in just a few months. Our Congress passed a resolution that under no terms would Iran be allowed to get nuclear weapons. So we're we're heading towards a parity in the Middle East that is unprecedented with a broad bipartisan consensus mm-hmm. to maintain Israel's trump card, which means Iran has to be destroyed. Right. So that's where we're at. Well, and, you know, fine, fine. I mean, you know, and, and I'm not saying fine as though Iran that I'm justifying us doing in, in Iran what we're doing in Gaza. But at another level, Iran did say death to America. But if Israel wasn't in the region, had the British not plunked the Jews down in there and the Zionists had not taken the bait, yeah. because, you know, the Germans had proposed Madagascar. And I said this on a previous Hebrews, and I want to say it again. My entire adult life, because I have two cousins, first cousins, my aunt's twin sons, Fischl and Ruvain, to give you an idea how religious my family was. My name's actually Ben Yomin. I mean, we didn't, this David thing's kind of like these Chinese come over. What's your name? Vincent Lee. Oh, sure, Vincent. You know, so the people that came with the tradition, you know, we were here. My son's name is Benjamin. Really? Yeah. Okay, cool. So uh, we came here, our forefathers had a choice. They could have gone to Israel. They could have gone to America. And those of us that were American Jews, possibly your friends that I'm, I'm not sure who you're talking about, but if they were plugged in and they're about my age, they harbored a sense of guilt because we knew people like Fischl and Ruvain. One of those brothers went to the West Bank and went to war. He became a rabbi and went to Israel, made what they call aliyah. And so he was actually putting his life on the line. And I, you know, I always felt like, wow, maybe I need to do that. You know, well, no, I'm not going to do that. I like the 1980s in America. Greed is good. Fantastic. You know, and I said, okay, go about your way. But we, that, that feeling was never really went away that I, you know, I shirked my responsibility as a Jew to go over there and fight for my people. That's there in, in, in the soup that's in my brain. And over the last couple of years, I've recognized that my family made a very conscious decision to come to the New Jerusalem and avoid the sandbox because they wanted well-being for their family. And it's not a well-being lifestyle to live in a war zone day after day, month after month, year after year, and to live by the sword because you'll die by the sword if you believe in the book. Mm-hmm. So the whole enterprise is, sus- is suspect at its base. And now we're starting to talk about the Gordian knot of globalism in a new way that, you know, and I think we're going to find an answer. You're going to ask me what I think we should do today. Anytime I got a problem that I can't solve, I pray and I just work on my own spiritual borders. Uh, A lot of Jews could leave Israel. A lot of religious Jews have left Israel. A lot of religious Jews, because they don't serve in the army, have left to escape that conflict. And I think you've said on this show. Bring them to America. Bring them to America. Mm-hmm. Because I'm going to say as an American, that's just a sandbox. The attachment to place as a substitute for faith, that's not very Christian. The Holy Ghost lives in those that believe. You don't have to be at the Temple Mount to prove that you're faithful. I don't like that. I've never, I didn't like it 30 years ago because it seems like an extreme thing to do to kill people to defend a place. A place. It's no different than they do in the street corners of Chicago. It, that's pretty much exactly true. But I'm, I'm saying it now, now that the people are there, but the difference it's is their, it's, not, not it's their, pl- but now it's their place. Right. They weren't there before the Balfour Declaration. Right. They weren't there before the British looking at the Suez Canal, looking at the oil in Saudi Arabia, said, oh, I bet we can really 
screw this region up by giving the, and of course, you know how they fenced it around their campfire it was a 501c3 fence and that there was this Protestant messianic vision about returning the Jews to Israel, which was a complete BS story. They were just controlling the region through conflict. Right, right. War is a racket. War is a racket. And that's a good cover story. That's a great cover story. It's the ultimate cover story. Returning the Jews to Israel to bring about what? Revelation? To, to bring about, I mean, to bring about. That's the, what, that was the cover story at the time. To bring about the end times? I mean. In the early 1900s, in the Protestant movement, mm-hmm. the, the righteous and divine argument. Oh, we're going we're gonna to use scripture now to, to self fulfill prophecy. That. That's exactly oh, what. Oh, give me a fucking No, break. that's what that's the British. Yeah. Of course yeah, of course. Of course, of course that would come from the Anglican and Church. And then the Marxist. Of course a self-fulfillment of prophecy would come down from the lineage of Martin Luther. <laughs> You're stunned. No, I'm not. It makes perfect sense. I mean, I I know about that. I mean, I I, I still hear it today. And that's what I'm saying. And don't don't get me wrong. Israel is a holy place, but again, this is Glenn Beck begging for you know Israeli citizenship. You know, it's just it's actually disgusting. It's just it's it's insulting to to the Jews. I think it's insulting to the people of Israel, but it's insulting to to himself. You know, most of all, um, and I th- I think Israel is a holy place. There's no there's no doubt that that Israel is a holy place. What makes it holy? The history. Okay. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know what the Palestinians. But my but my before this before this last 30 years of bloodletting, 64, 34, 40 years. Go back 40 years. Let's go right back after the massacre in at the Olympics, the Munich Olympics. This is 72, I think. Uh, this is when Yasser Arafat was a young man. Smoking. The Palestinian people at that time were advocating for let it be an international place, move the United Nations to Jerusalem. Let's have human rights. Let's have civil rights. Let's have globalism. Let this be <laughs> the center <laughs> of the whole deal. Uh, right. Yeah. That's that's where they that's where that community in its leadership was at in 1975-76. Actually in hindsight, it's not really a bad idea, is it? Compared to where we're at right now today. Yeah, yeah that'd be a step better in the Get the direction. United Nations out of New York City. Put it in Jerusalem. Yeah. Let the religious people be involved in globalism so that it has a righteous and divine non-material aspect to it to balance the materialism of trade. We had a moment. We got a better chance of the Muslims and the Jews coming together on their own accord than the globalists getting in on, on a religious. Why would they want to get in the way of the money making? I mean, you just said it so eloquently. They, they if you don't, don't need the kill, money. They don't need don't, the money. At who, the highest level of globalism, it's not about the money. That's they're running. That's a racket they're running. At the highest level of globalism, the monetary, the monetary. You mean they're already okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> when you print the money, when you set the monetary policy for the entire world, you don't really need the money. <laughs> Serious. They're using they're they're using the money as a cover story the same way the the religious uh you know uh, uh frauds are using wrapping themselves in the faith. It's easy to use a thing as big as money or faith to 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 sell the story. Those two things go together just wonderfully. Yeah, they do, don't they? Boy, this is a great Hebrews episode. You like it? This one. And now, I mean, I listened to you go for a long time, mm-hmm. but what did we get to? Sometimes I just got to let you run because what we've said is now. Will you summarize it for the listeners? <laughs> That shit is deep right there. I mean, there's going to be people putting the live chat, chat, what are they talking about? (laughs) I'm sorry. This is Royce and I. When we get together, sometimes we just go off. You said you wanted Hebrews. This is what it's like. You want us to give you some doctored up version of our conversation. This is what the fuck we do. Um. I don't even know how to summarize it. I mean, you got to watch the shit. You got to. You got to. You got to. You have to play it back. You got to get a here. summary. I think you what you here. said was the people yeah. that make the money, which is mammon, mammon, mm-hmm. can use it the same way the people that make the religion can use it. They're the same people. Same people. Oh fuck, that's scary. Five hundred one C three. 
whatever. neocon globalists. Oh, that's terrifying. That's really terrifying. You know, I, I, to, to finish, I just I got to get some 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 clarity on this on this Israel thing because it came it came across my desk, you know, and and I'm just like. I don't know what the answer is. I, I really don't. I don't claim to know what the answer is. I know what our policy should be. It should be America first. I, that's just what it is. And I think we need to, I think in all fairness, if, if we really love the Jews, if we really believe, let's not even talk about on a religious basis. Because I think, I don't, I don't want to talk about on a religious basis because the people who are involved aren't necessarily But at that, that level, we'd be talking about the Uyghurs at the same level. We should be, yeah. Right. Of course. We could be talking about the Palestinians Absolutely. at the same level. Yeah. And so I don't want to talk about it on a religious level. I just want to talk about it from a from a humanitarian standpoint. Let's just think about it humanitarian. For, you know, let's play their game. If we pulled out of Israel, there is a possibility, a good possibility, that their enemies completely overrun Israel uh, and and eventually genocide the, the Jews. The African Jews, the, the European Jews, American Jews, the Jews that are native to the to the region. I mean, to that's all the of fear. That's the fear, and there's a there's a possibility, especially if you listen to the rhetoric. Now they may be saying it as a bluff to extort money. We know that that's a thing, <laughs> at least in the neighborhood. That's a thing. Oh, we'll come and shoot that place up every day. We want our money on the first and the fifteenth. That's how the mafia used to do it. They take rackets from the local businesses. Hey, can't say that your windows won't get broken every single week. We can protect you, though. We need $2,000 a month. You get $2,000 a month from 20 local businesses, good eating. 40, 40 Gs a month is big. So maybe they're saying there's a bluff. I don't think it's a bluff. I mean, when you charge, when you charge the wall, you're taking the bluff to a level that the net result's still the same, right? I mean, that's what they did. When you, when you, you know, the, 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 the bluff is over once you cross a certain line. Now it becomes real, and you only got to up the ante. So even if it's a bluff, the the level of bluff is only going to escalate. And bluffery and cuckery. Yeah, that's that's a you got to go up. Okay, <laughs> so that that's a possibility. If that's the case, then we're doing a disservice to the Jews. We're doing a disservice to people that live there in Israel if we don't think about a contingency. What the contingency is, and and I don't want to hear God is the contingency because He's planned too. Okay, but we don't the people that have. Don't be going to think God's going to come help you when you reject God and you let Luciferians run your governments or run your institutions. That's a naivety that I'm, I'm not really okay with because it, it paints God as only a loving God and not a wrathful one. And that's a misread of history. So don't, don't tell me you're going back to retrieve. Oh, and, I'm not going to tell you. I know you wouldn't, but <laughs> these people, not you personally. Hey, the but, Jews, the Jews have a very swallowed strong... Swallowed the whole, all of them uphold. The desert just opened up and swallowed them. Right. That's divine intervention. But don't go back and grab the biblical significance of territorial Israel, but you don't, ex you don't acknowledge that God is a wrathful one as well as being a graceful one. That's a scam. Okay. So we're keeping the God out of it. This is political. This is a matter of humanitarianism. Okay. We are doing them a disservice if we don't at least discuss a contingency that takes them out of the line of fire, right? If in the interest of peace, if in the interest of, of preserving, a, a stopping a genocide, in the interest of, of, of not causing a nuclear war potentially, the fact that none of these people, a lot of these people won't even consider a contingency of what happens when America can either no longer hold up the security of Israel well before Israel can hold up its own security, which it can't, that's why we sell the Ford into the Mediterranean, because Israel can't hold up its own security. Now it can use its nukes, but that's mutually assured destruction. They share land. That they're, they're not America, okay? They don't got two big oceans for, for, for nuclear, uh, and, and they don't even have nuclear, but let's be clear. The new nukes don't have radiation fallout. That's a scam. The new hydrogen bombs, they don't have radiation fallout. That's not a, the, the newest nuclear weapons are green. No, seriously. Well, they're greener. Seriously. Well, that's what they claim. That they don't, that the radiation that the the radiation from Chernobyl, they have newer versions of nuclear weapons that do not have the same type of radiation fallout and spillover. So then maybe let let Israel use it. Are these the same Here's what I'm saying. Are these the same people? Let Israel have... use their nukes then. 
Oh, they got old dirty nukes. Well, what, and which ones do you think they would use? I think they use the ones that make things not livable for a while. I don't know. Uh, that's too far for me to tell. Well, All I'm, I'm saying is this. I'm saying the if, same people that are selling us on the green energy thing are selling us green nukes. Come I don't on. think so. No, I think I think the, the hydrogen, I think there's a, an evolution of the hydrogen bomb that happened where the radiation, the energy that, that's, that's ignited in the, the, the explosions, the, the blast radius that take place uh, is more incineration than it is radiation. And, and that's that, that, I think that was a development that took place kind of under the, under the, under the radar, under so the radar. Right? Yeah. Cause radiation is more scary, right? You know, the, you know, the, the skin melting away is, is a better, uh, better form of theater versus boom, million people just incinerated and that's it right there. Cause then people would use them. I mean, and I think they, you know, wh- anyway, that's not my point. My point is we're doing them a disservice if we don't find or at least discuss a contingency. And why would one of that those contingencies not be bringing the Jews to America? Who would be against this? Oh, I, I'm reading a few people. I could name some names. There'd be a lot of people that were against it. I know, but but what I'm saying is, what and is the, the versus the alternative? And, and the Jews would be against it because they have yes, a, but a versus tie to the, the alternative. I think the, the Jewish people would rather die there than come here. Really? Yeah, I do. How, they all have they they all have dual citizenship anyway. You know that tie to the land, that tie to the <laughs> Come land. Come on, no, those you Jews, live here. Those Jews that the, are there are tied to that land. They have given themselves over to this. What you call it's a holy place. Hey, it's not for me to. It's not for me to. It's not for me to tell Jews what they should be tied to or what they should. But here's the thing: if you want to go kamikazean, look, look, man. You know, if my little, if if my little brother, I love him to death. My little brother wiped his little dirty butt. When he's a baby, love him. You want to go hang down there with the crackheads and the and the and the robbers? I'm gonna come get you once. You want to keep going down there? I'm not coming back down there to get you no more. And when they give you that call from that coroner's office and they say, "Hey, you know, note passed," and we all gotta cry and be sad about it and go to the funeral and move on. That's life. As too is the way with all things, no matter how big the scale. Do y'all still y'all want to play? Well, we've been stuck on this one for several thousand, several hey, thousand years. Yeah, hey, but the, what, the only about two hundred for us here in America. Only about sixty for us here in America. Us having the referendum on that issue, and we need to be clear about it. Is how far are we willing to go? Are we willing to go to all out nuclear war, world war? Sure, seems like it does. Of it? course, yeah, absolutely, it seems like. It, but that's the, the referendum, bluff, or at least the bluff is there. At least the bluff is there. That's the referendum right now. And as much as it's Ukraine, it is Israel. And I'm not trying to create a false equivalency, but the two tables just happen to be on the, the I two mean, issues just happen to be on the table well, at the same time. That goes back to what we said, the, this election, it's not about these two it's men. It's a paradigm. Right. It's a paradigm election. You said that earlier to me. Right. You said this is a paradigm election. Paradigm will be shifted. Well, it will or it won't. And that's what you said. Right. It's that paradigm might have more juice than I'm giving it credit for. We'll see. Well, we will see. But I'll tell you what's poking big holes in it. They don't have control of the narrative anymore. When I look up and I see 100,000 people watch Hebrews in 12 hours, and we're just getting rolling. Maybe in a couple of years it would be two, three, four, five, eight million. Who knows how many? And that's not like I'm saying we want to be famous. I'm saying the narrative is out of their control. It's out of their control. And they're going to get desperate because of that, right? Right, because now there's a an exchange of ideas and a search for truth that was never part of the American political process. There's never been a certain, and we still see it even on, you know, people predicting the future left and right. We're sitting there going, boy, let's think about this. This is real serious. Nobody does that. Nobody says, whoa, here's a big gap. We can't see. We need to consider these ideas. What does this mean? Well, no, everybody else is saying, well, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Yeah. We're going to have this. These people, somebody's paying them to talk like that. We have no friggin' idea what's going to happen. <laughs> we're past, we're past the outer mar- marker now, yeah. right? Like Out in, past the buoy. We are. Well, in terms of this election, we have no idea how this is going to go down. You know, I listen to people. Trump's we, the polls are just he's up by enormous numbers. Then you listen to MSNBC; it's super close. How, how we, we, you know, <laughs> who are you going to? I don't believe any of them. The and even even the polls themselves. Yeah. 
We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, we don't even know if the elections are secure. In fact, we have better pretty, evidence that they're not. Pretty good evidence. Yeah, they're not secure. So we, we don't know what's going to happen. But I can I can try and offer uh, some uh, some hope for people who are at least willing to just ask to watch it. One, one second. Yeah. Um, some some hope for people who are willing to uh, just ask the right questions. Let's just ask the right questions. What do we do? I said we bring the Jews to, to America. That's not a, I, I don't see that as a hostile or, or a, a degradation. Of How about the, bringing the United Nations to Jerusalem? Bring people into your home? How about putting the United Nations in Jerusalem? How about, re, United, how about resurrecting that old idea? I don't know. The United Nations is a, is a failed institution. Maybe it'd be a way to renew it. No, I said we just get rid of it. Fuck the United Nations, fuck them. Their their COVID thing has shown that they're not they're not worthy of a. Oh, you mean just to revive the whole? Just revive the whole deal by by balancing. Nah, out. they're too anti-Christian. The the United Nations is Luciferian down at its core, so we need to just probably get rid of that. This we want to disassociate. We need to pull out of the United Nations. Donald Trump's talking about pulling out of NATO, and that was that was a good step. If it was me, I'd say we. He left the WHO. I'd say we we pull out of the United Nations as a whole. Didn't he? We're, matter of fact, guess what? what? We're pulling off the Security Council. Let's see how much security there is after Our we're, name we're is Paul, and it's between y'all. It's between y'all. Go for it. Y'all figure it out. You know, um, but yeah, I just, I just, uh, I'm troubled by the, the 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 Israel thing. I'm troubled. I'm troubled by the you know the the idea that they would bomb Rafa's crossing. Um, you know, you you run scared mice into a corner and then you and then you kill them in that way is kind of a you know it's 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 brutal it really is it's war it it's, is it's okay it's a cultural it war it is but i mean there's still sacred honor and you know and at the same time i said hey let them use their nukes i mean this is the this is the trouble with war right and you know that's why you should be slow to war but And a few atomic bombs would definitely slow down some radicalism. You know, there's a. Famous... I don't mean to say that just flippantly, but we're go people got to realize whether you like it or not, we're going there. So, I mean, if people don't feel comfortable with it, it doesn't really fucking matter to me. We're not necessarily going there. No, I mean, we're, no, no, we're there. I mean, we're, we're there, but we don't we're, have Everything's to... up on the bar right That's there. That's correct. But yeah. it doesn't have, it's this election. Is going to, you know, if there was a landslide election. Uh, they had no, they, that makes no difference. Oh, I don't agree with you. No, this that makes no difference with that issue. No, I don't agree with you. No, that issue is going to be the perpetual racket no matter what. Well, it's a racket as a threat. Right. You're saying they're going to pop them off. Right, but sometimes in order to deal with the bluff and a threat, you have to do what? Well, sometimes you have to pull the trigger occasionally. You have to call the bluff. Right. That's the, that's the, that's just fundamental game of poker. But I'm saying. It doesn't have to be. We could have an anti-war election. You know, the one thing Trump's been let pretty- them use, no, you know, let, let them use their bombs. I'm not into, the, what, the, what, what my friend fails to understand is, if America continues to be a reverse vassal empire where we let everybody extort us in order to preserve peace, America won't survive. And, or let's say it won't survive as America. It won't survive as a self-governing. It won't survive as a, as a self-governing nation. It'll become it'll become an a, empire. A pro, it'll become a proxy, just collecting money all over the world. That's what we are now. We're a proxy uh, government collecting people's money, exchanging money. We're we're a broker. We're a broker. We're the emperor. We're, we're just doing deals. We're you know show me the money. Right, that's that's what we're doing, and that's not what this country is supposed to be. Certainly can't can't hope to to claim any righteous and divine uh, position on geopolitical conflicts or matters when you're a money broker. That, I mean, that's really tough to to do. You really need some moral high ground to play arbiter as emperor all around the world. So let's see here. What do we have for uh, possibilities? We got use some nukes, mm -hmm. come to America. Mm -hmm. Put the United Nations in uh, Jerusalem. Well, that's three new ideas. Yeah, I'm not. You know, to have a good idea, you gotta have a bunch of you them. You gotta have a lot of ideas. <laughs> if anybody wants to give us some ideas, we're listening because this has never been explored. No, I, what I'm saying is, I think if we pull out and we let them 
fight it out. They'll come to a, they'll come to a peace. And maybe it is Israel has to use their atomic bombs, has to use a few atomic bombs. That'll hey, I bet you I, Iran will think differently uh, the day after. And that's the way that's the that's the way the last world war ended. See, but we're trying to we're trying to preserve. See, we think we can we can do a deal where where we avoid all of the tragedy, but the tragedy comes nonetheless. Right. And then we're just making it worse at the end. The end result's going to be let, let them use a few tactical atomic bombs there in the Middle East. Go ahead you, or let, let Iran do it. See, but the fear is, well, Iran uses it. They're going to wipe out all of Israel. Right. It's a small place. And, well, if, if it's that small and the history of the Jewish people is constrained to that, isn't that kind of a vulnerability well beyond what if we really love the, the, the Jewish people? And we want to preserve the Jewish culture, and we want to preserve the Jewish. But isn't it kind of playing with fire to have them and constrained in such a small place in the first anyway? You know, that's a very uh, brings up some dark. You know, that's the, my scope of time is a little bit different than other people. Mm -hmm. If you were going to set some people up, like a hit, you get them all together for a card game, old fashioned, right? They got everybody. In one spot. I don't like that. Of course, I'm not there. I, I don't like that either. And I especially don't like it that they got. I mean, what's the contingency plan? Like mm -hmm. you're talking about our government, right? Yeah. What's the What's the Israeli contingency plan if all of a sudden everything's gone? If what if America What if America collapses? What's the contingency plan? You know, after you were talking about mammon and uh, religion, the way you were, I don't think there's any collapse coming. True. I think, I True. mean, it sounds to me like they're selling a collapse. True. So that they can sell other Well, things. no, but what I'm saying is, I think a global collapse is unlikely. Could America collapse, collapse as a nation? Is, collapse is what? The only thing that will collapse is my ability to be a free person. But, but The country's but no, not going away. Uh, well, the power grid could go down. We could go into nine months of chaos, economic Great. depression. Great, everybody be begging the government to feed them. True. Perfect. True. And the means of production is really the, the 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 means of production is really the cornerstone of currency, right? Food, food, right? So in that way, do we really have a problem producing food? Mm, we don't. Or what we do as individuals? But yeah, I'm, yes. But I'm saying as a society, we don't. As a society, who's we, controlling that food? There you go. So I'm saying when I when I think about, is it really going to shit? Not if the food isn't. Now, some people would argue that the that food production is much more delicate process than we think, and maybe there's some truth to that. I'm not a food manufacturing expert, but I do know that we have a surplus of food in this country, and we have a we we we've all but solved global hunger at this point. Now, there's still people who are, go hungry, but it's mostly because we haven't made it a priority to get the food to them. And I'm not I'm not shilling for more UNICEF NGOs that take American tax money and shit. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that, but we, we're pretty good at producing food. Let me, let's just be honest. Well, I throw we, away more bread yeah, than we eat. But we've given up our individual ability. We give, yes. That needs to be reclaimed. Yes. These are things that we as American citizens can look back at what made the country the way it was when it was founded. What was self-governance? Self-governance is self-governance. But know, what I was saying is, again, America. America. America could going to a, a, a well sure because the people are helpless yes america going to a state of crisis turmoil uh economic you know uh, depression any of these things my question to all of these people who are so pro-israel what happens if america isn't there and if you in some strange i think israel's got a foot in the china boat if you a, a, a foot their ass is in the China boat. Their right. ass is sitting in it. That's correct. Yeah, and they're, on two on both cheeks. They're doing something. Okay, right China, cheek, left cheek. The Chinese call this standing on two boats. They're standing on two. It's one boat. Well, that's the next level. Of it's it. one boat. Why are we fighting? <laughs> the American Chinese boat is one boat. I, I don't know. Well, What's all on. the fighting about? What's all the fighting about? But see, this is where I start. That's to what get... Joe Biden's going to say. What's what we, all the what fighting, fighting about? For? Economy's the best it's ever been. This is where I start to get real worried, though. This is where my, my nightmares, my nightmares get a little <laughs> fucking twisted. 
Some, uh, you know, I had the night. You know, we went a little bit far to, to, to tonight. I had the dream about the Ayatollah You're going, watching Johnny gonna, Carson. See, and I'm trying to Jerry's. slow him down. He's going to keep going about the twisted dreams. Go ahead. My dreams get a little twisted, and in my in the twisted in the most twisted, darkest <clears throat> nightmares of mine. The whole thing is not only is the whole thing a theater, but in the theater, the punchline is for America. To, to fall or go through this, this downturn that then justifies restructuring the whole thing away from American values and ideals. And that's why they call it the American experiment. You know, it's like, oh, the experiment failed. America failed. And you hear the rhetoric rising, like, and, and you, 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 you can hear a concession in the people here in America that oh, America's doomed. That's oh, why the 501c3s oh, are voting, Bi- they're voting oh, oh, Biden. This is, yeah, this is Babylon. It's destined to fall. Same people who tried to self-fulfill the prophecy of, of Revelation. You know, America is Babylon. America is Babylon. You people made it that way. It didn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. But again, in the theater, if America falls, what happens to Israel then? It's on its own. And in that, and in that, in that, iteration of, of things, they're going to have to use those bombs anyway. So we're kind of just trying to kick the can as much as we can. And, and, and the referendum for Donald Trump right now is we're done kicking the can. Let's stop kicking the can now. That's the, that's the debt, the border, the forever wars. We could keep the border open and we could say, hey, more employment. Hey, you know, maybe these people will. More st- consumers. Hey. Good for the economy. Could be great. We could do that. We could get into more forever wars and say, hey. Good for the economy. Hey, American manufacturers. They actually say it right out loud, the quiet part out loud. The America First movement is like, no, we need to plug these holes. This ship is sinking. You know, it's not even that the ship is sinking. It's that there's... Taking on water. You know, after after the tonight's conversation... Maybe it's not. It's not sinking. <laughs> you convinced me. Okay. It's not. When We had that piece about American culture being hegemonic in the world. Yeah. I, I have to say, I have, you know... Unlike the rest of these pundits, I'll draw back and say, oh, good point. I, I concede on that one. And if that's the case, it's not about America falling. It's what is America. What is America? Beautiful, what yes. What is America? Yes. And that's what we're fighting about. That's why I'm saying it's a paradigm election. Yes. Because if we go, we're so far down this paradigm, we're the resistors. We're the last people saying, where's the world of the spirit? Where is any integrity amongst the people? What happened to self-governance? What happened to faith? What happened to picking up your cross and bearing it? What happened to giving up your life so you'll find it? What happened to all these fundamental aspects of what the American experiment was founded on? And we, if we're going to re- recover that, it's going to take ideas, not candidates. Candidates are selling ideas. Let's go be- beneath this duality of Biden Trump and say, what are the ideas beneath these two people? Not what they say, what's actually going on, which every American citizen knows. So if you're going to look at me and say, you'd rather vote for Biden than Trump, then you're voting for Biden. Okay. Not Biden. It's not Biden you're voting for. That's why I get mad at these people because they know, they know it's got nothing to do with Biden. It's what's underneath. He's just a standard bearer. Do you, do you agree? Does that make some? 100%. Great. It's about the ideas. It'd be nice to get some leaders, like a young leader like a Royce White. There is a generation of new people that are not corrupt. Yeah. That are really righteous in their aims. They're not grifters. They're really not. In you can't on really, it. You can't really impugn them. We're not in on it. You're not. You're an outsider. Right? Completely. So if we could get to a new generation where we had real leadership that was not corrupted, that'd be a different thing. Right now, I'm looking at ideas and paradigm shifts. Because, you know, that's just, that's all that's left to me. I mean, I don't want to vote for Biden. (laughs) (laughs) It's been another episode of Please Call Me Crazy. Another episode of Hebrews. Uh, here in the belly of the beast, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Thanks for being with us. The great Professor Penn. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel, the Professor Penn Podcast. YouTube search Professor Penn Podcast. Uh, the great Professor Penn. Make sure you like and subscribe to his channel. 
Um, Real America's Voice tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Eastern, before the war room with the great Steve Bannon. Free People Radio is a broadcast source for your news and information. We're asking for your support. Royce never does this. I'm going to do it. We're not trying to get rich. We're trying to stay in business and build content because this is about this paradigm. So thank you for being here with us tonight. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. We do. Right. We we hope you like Hebrews. We know you like Hebrews. We appreciate the feedback. We're glad to be back uh, up and running on the audio platforms. Uh, that's that's been a a good improvement. We, we we were down for about a month there, so you can listen on all the audio platforms. Uh, Real America's Voice tomorrow, nine a.m. Eastern. The John Fredericks Radio Network Monday through Friday at nine p.m. Eastern. 9 p.m. Eastern. Yes, tomorrow on Real America's Voice, it's 9 a.m. Eastern. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday for Please Call Me Crazy. Uh, Tuesday, Thursday at 7.30 for Professor Penn. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. 7.30 Central Time. 8.30 Eastern. Two Thursday, Tuesdays and Thursday. On Professor all Penn social podcasts. media, we need everybody to come on to our social media channels. Yep. Because we're, you know, we're, we're a movement. We're not just... We're trying well, to, you know. let, let, let them find it. You know, if, if people, you know, you know, we all get to decide how the country burns now. This is a blast. I'm having a blast. This is some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. I think I went through most of my life not even be able to have, find people who could have, I could have conversations with like this. And that, that's a telltale sign of how the country got this way in the first place. If the people don't, don't, aren't inspired to action by a genuine conversation, then we deserve to die and we deserve to, being changed, and I'm not really uh, afraid of it. Maybe so. next time we should break out the McAllen. The McAllen would be a because that's addition. what used to be. Politics used to be at the local pub. Yeah, because there's no other entertainment. Yeah. That was entertainment. Still at the pub. Still beers and and hot dogs. Great. Let's talk about real issues. Paradigm shifts. Whiskey costs too much. We got to get the whiskey down. That's another conversation. Globalism. <laughs> Globalism. <laughs> We appreciate you guys being here. Um, thank you for your viewership and listenership today and in the future. Uh, congratulations to Donald Trump, uh, his win in the primary here in Minnesota, to the 70,000 Nikki Haley voters. Uh, I impugn you for being a part of the problem. And uh, we, we hope that you go caucus with the Democrats, as you should, so we can bring more genuine America firsters into the movement. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, we'll, we'll see you next Friday, maybe next week, maybe next week during the week for another episode of Hebrews. The fight continues, as always. Godspeed.